Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new tutorial video by WTTN and today we'll be talking about writing your very own custom actuator. So in this case, if you haven't seen the previous video where we enabled actuators in a Spring Boot application, I would highly recommend it. There would be an eye icon or a link in the description. Uh, so take a look at that video. How did we enable actuators? Uh, just to recap, actuators are nothing but endpoints which give you insight into your application. There are a lot of things that you can do uh, with these endpoints that are cool little uh, by default endpoints that you get that Spring Boot already provides. But there can be instances where you need to do something more, add a little bit of logic uh, to these existing uh, functionalities and then uh, extend it to, you know, best suit your uh, need. So this is where this tutorial comes in where you're writing your very own custom, you know, actuator. So in this case, in this scenario, I'm going to use the most common one, the health endpoint. Uh, we're going to extend that and we're going to check maybe some business logic and uh, determine if our application is truly up or it's down. So to start with, uh, I'm just going to create. So yeah, this project is available in Git. The link is in the description. Uh, you can always pull it up and look at the code there. Uh, I'm going to create a package now. Uh, it says actuator. Uh, I'm going to write a custom health, whoops, health actuator. That's right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is make it a component because I want my Spring application to handle this. This should be a beam. Um, okay. The next thing we need to do is since we're working with the health endpoint, we are going to implement an interface called health indicator. Um, so this is going to tell us that, you know what, this uh, has some uh, method that we need to implement. Now, this is a functional interface. So if you look at this, Right, there is a functional interface which has a default method got get health. Let's ignore this for a minute. And there is another uh, function called health, right? So, which basically just returns your health object. Now, let's take a look at the health object or the health class itself. Now, uh, if you look at this class, uh, it says that it's extending the health component it has a status and it has a map of details which is string and object in nature so let's let's only consider that uh, for us right now this is important because we want to set the status as up or down based on whatever uh, business logic that we might have right so now that we uh, have created a component um, we created a spring bean called custom health actuator let's actually implement the health um, health function right so we don't need to do get health because it has a default uh, implementation we're going to stick with that one for now and so now uh, let's say that you had a third party api that you were you know con consuming and this third party api has a service of some sort which uh, you use now what you can do is you can just auto wire this right um, and you can have your uh, uh, api so there's something like that, right? And what you can do is you can use this API service inside the health and you can say if API service um, is working right or something like that, API service is, uh, uh, service is up, uh, it can have its, if it's a HTTP uh, protocol or a, a REST endpoint, it can have its own health endpoint, right? So you can consume that and you can check, okay, if it's up, then basically my application is up, right? So this can be your business logic. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to take out all of this, right? So let's say your third party API is up and running. Everything is working fine. So you just need to return that, okay, my application is healthy. It means my application is up. So the status can be up down um, I think there's an unknown as well but we should avoid unknown because it really if you're writing something custom then it should only be up or down um, so what you can do is uh, you can say you know what my health application is absolutely working fine so I'm just going to give it an up but for the sake of this example right because the application is going to be up anyway uh, I'm just going to write health uh, let's say there is some issue with the uh, uh, with the with the third party API and I'm going to say that, okay, my custom health actuator says that the application is down because the third party API is not working. So my application is basically, it does, it cannot work. It cannot operate without that third party API. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the inbuilt health builder and we're going to say health dot down dot build. 
right? So this is going to create an object of the health class and it's going to set the status as down. Okay, and it's going to return it with the health. Now we've written this uh, custom health uh, actuator. I haven't done anything yet. Uh, and I'm just going to run this application and let's see if this changes my health endpoint, uh, which would anyway show up to down because I have sent the status is down. Yep. So it is showing the status as down. So essentially what is happening is it's looking at the uh, looking at the instances where the health indicator is being used and it's going to determine, okay, uh, health indicator used by custom health actuator says it's down. That means the application is down. So let, let me make it up just to show you guys like what happens. So I'm just going to rerun the application. Uh, there is no hot swap here. So I'm just rerunning the application. It, it should take around four seconds. Yeah. And I'm going to send the health endpoint check again, its status is up, right? So it's as simple as that. You can say that, you know what? Okay, third party API working down, um, sorry, not working down. If it's working, then it's up, right? It can be any business logic that you want. But let's say that you have multiple things happening, right? Uh, there's no one way to determine whether your application is up or not. And what, what do I mean by that, right? So let's say that you have, uh, um, let's say you have three services, one, um, two and then three, right? So this one is up. This one is also up, right? But this one is down. So what do we do? Um, I would say, uh, based on your business logic, let's say you want to make the application health as down because this is a very important service and that service is not working for you. So essentially you don't want the application to be working. You want to uh, send out a signal, you want to send out an alert, uh, raise and uh, something on your infra level that says that, okay, this third service is down, that means that the application is down. So how do we achieve this, right? Uh, how do we say that the third one is down and how do you send out this information in the health endpoint itself, where you can see that, okay, application or the service three or whatever is that uh, thing that you're looking at, the third service is down and that's why the application is down. Well, it's it's fairly simple. Spring Boot is, as I said, Spring Boot is very, very easy to work with. So all you need to do is set one property, which is not enabled by default. I don't know why they haven't enabled this. Uh, it's probably to, you know, um, eliminate uh, unnecessary uh, issues in, in yeah, so yeah, so the, it might be the case where people don't want this by default, but I think it, it would have been better if they would have enabled by this, uh, this by default. So yeah, so you just need to set the management endpoint and then the health because we're working with health. Uh, if it's something else like a thread dump or something like that, you can add that and show details, which is I think always uh, set to never, but I'm just gonna set it to always, right? So what this does is uh, the the map, right, that we saw in our health class, essentially these are details contained within uh, within this map, which, which says things are up, not up, what is happening and all those kind of stuff, right? So those things are now going to be displayed on your uh, health endpoint. So I'm just going to run this again. I, again, I haven't changed much. I've just added this property, management endpoint health and show details and just running the application again. Let's see what's the output now. Yep. So as you can see, you get a bunch of extra stuff now uh, within the components property. You can see we see our very own custom health actuator, uh, which says the status is up. There's no details to it because we haven't added any details. Uh, then you see a couple of things you see db disk space and ping right so this essentially is something which spring boot does by default for you uh, you don't have to do anything extra for this it will do it automatically for you since we have configured the database as a data source the h2 internal data source that we have which is basically up and running right now uh, that's how it determines that okay db is this disk space it will automatically look at and it will determine okay this much disk space we have and the ping is obviously whether the uh, we are able to reach the application or not. Uh, so these three are by default, and this is the one which we added. Now, 
if we want to add something uh, within here right so let's say all three have uh, these two have details right so we want some detail with our custom health actuator as well as i said right so let's say our application is down and as i said earlier right so it's down because of uh, the third service so i'm just going to say with details i'm going to write number three and i'm going to say let's something like unreachable right so uh, i'm going to know that okay number three service number three was unreachable and that's why i'm showing it as down otherwise i would have sent it as health dot uh, up dot build right so i'm just going to run this again and let it let it start okay started and we are going to hit our endpoint again and as you can see uh, just like the other two we also get start getting details which shows that okay number three is unreachable that's why the status is down and that's why the overall status of the application is also going down now this is how things work when we add our very own custom actuator this can be very helpful when you have anything uh, like a remote um, like some kind of mechanism which is monitoring your application uh, like a kubernetes um, master node or something like that which is going to look at your application and determine okay do we need to do anything do we need to take any action is there an alert needed and all those kind of stuff you can easily manage with uh, writing your very own custom uh, health endpoints or even your custom health actuators like this one that we did here right so yeah i think this this uh, completes the tutorial it's fairly easy if there are any questions queries you can obviously write a comment or reach out to me directly and uh, i do hope that you like the video like the series if you do like it please leave a thumbs up if you don't like it then write in the comment what you didn't like what mistakes i made uh, something like that uh, let's make this a conversation uh, and obviously if you want to see more videos uh, then definitely don't forget to subscribe Thank you for watching. Have a great time.